fact it's that it's exactly 162 days until the general elections on February 25th 2023 we're almost in the official campaign season now the candidates are talking more and more about their plans so on the road to 2023 we're also going to be talking more about their policy points my goal is that um, on February 25th, when you are casting your vote, you're going to know where these men and women stand on the issues that matter to you. It's not going to be just about their state of origin or their religion or their party. It's going to be the, about their positions on issues because that's really important. So today, let's talk about um, green energy. Peter Obi says that uh, he will consider it. But it shouldn't be our priority as a developing nation. Atiku disagrees. Then let's look at the latest poll from ANAP. ANAP uh, says that uh, P2B is in the lead and also says that uh, Nigerians care, more, uh, care the most about insecurity. We'll talk about that poll. Uh, we'll also talk about the attempt to stop BVAS and electronic transmission. Then, if we have time, let's talk about Atiku's meeting with uh, angry PDP governors and the controversy over his policy document. So, as you can see, there's a lot lined up to talk about this evening. Let's get started. <laughs> During his diaspora tour, he was asked about green energy. Specifically, he was asked whether he would continue one of Buhari administration's um, stated policies to invest more in renewable energy. He was asked uh, because he talks a lot about, you know, increasing manufacturing. He talks a lot about uh, industrialization. And usually, it's difficult to uh, do manufacturing and industrialization industrialization without using fo uh, fossil fuels without focusing on fossil fuels so he was asked about green energy and here is what he had to say what do you think about the green energy initiative that is has been administrated by the ap administration considering your policies to pursue aggressive production and industrialization in nigeria quite frankly you know there have been a lot of talk about green energy and climate change and everything I'm not very fast. I've read about a lot about them, and we will all consider it in whatever we're doing. But quite frankly, I'm going to be aggressive in other areas than in some of the things that are coming out on issue of climate change. We're going to deal with it. We're going to give it attention. But that, this is not more important, as important as securing the people because you can't be talking about climate change when people are taking cover from bombs. <laughs> huh? I might be wrong, but... Uh, <laughs> huh? Now, of course, both his supporters and his critics have jumped on the comments. Um, critics have a lot of issues with it. First, they're asking, well, why aren't you, by your own admi admission, well-versed in the topic of green energy, since it's a serious topic worldwide? After all, um, you're going to have to have conversations and negotiations with other world leaders about it. So that's the first criticism I've heard. Second of all, they disagree with Obi for saying that we cannot think about green energy until we face other problems. But Obi's supporters are pushing back. Uh, on the well-versed matter, uh, they say that there's nothing wrong with a candidate um, being humble and saying, yes, I've read a lot about this, but I'm not the expert. Um, they say, oh, no president is an expert on everything. And on the issue of importance or priority, OB supporters say that OB is right. OB supporters say that if it's a choice between developing the economy's industrial base to create jobs to, uh, and uh, if, it, if it's a choice between um, developing uh, the um, 
uh, economic industrial base of the country, the economy's industrial base, and it, so that we can create jobs and switching to green, that the right choice would be to pick the economy. That's what his supporters have said. They point to the EU nations who have suddenly switched back to coal, who have suddenly switched back to nuclear because of their beef with Russia. They say that if other countries, OB supporters now, OB supporters are saying that if other countries, including the Western countries, can put their national interest ahead of climate issues. Why shouldn't Nigeria do the same thing? So these are, are both sides of the argument. And I want to know where you stand. Where do you stand on this? Remember that uh, <laughs> for those of you who are fans of hard facts and who listen to I Beg to Differ, this was a topic on I Beg to Differ last month. You remember Stephanie Ehi versus uh, Musa Nicholas Okoya. They faced each other during the semifinal. And this was their topic. That was a debate where Musa accidentally argued the wrong side. So where do you stand? Atiko Abubakar joined the debate. He tweeted a thread which seems to be shading Ob Obi's position. And one of the tweets said, quote, Climate change is real. The flooding that has followed torrential downpours in towns and villages in Nigeria, like other places around the globe, confirms this, end quote. Another tweet said, quote, these unfortunate incidents should be a wake up call for, to the urgency of our responsiveness to the issues of climate change and global warming, end quote. I really love it when candidates talk issues and talk policies. You know, nobody's snapping with corn anymore and frying akara and plating hair. I love it. They are focusing on the issues. I love it because that's what should matter to you, to be honest. What should, what should matter to you is not who is, you know, uh, who appears to be accessible. It's about where do they stand on policies. So on this one, both Atiku and Obi agree that climate change is a problem. Obi says his government will pay attention to green energy, but he doesn't see it as the top priority. Atiku believes climate change is an issue that should be top of mind because it has real world effects on our farmers and our property. Which of the two front-runner presidential candidates do you agree with more on this? The third front-runner, Bola Tinubu, hasn't given us an official position on green energy yet. So let's focus on the two who have. Whose position do you agree with the more? 0700-993-993-993. 0700-993-993-993. Still to come on this show... The poll from the ANAP Foundation, it's an NGO, uh, and they released the poll showing, um, you know, certain results. And we'll discuss all of that uh, later on within the hour. But for right now, which of the front runners do you agree with on this green energy business? 99.3, hello. Hello, good evening, Sandra. Good evening, sir. What's your name? Mm -hmm. My name is Jason Gordon. I'm from Lucky. You've got one minute. Go ahead. Okay, um, if I, I will have my opinion on what um, transpired between Obi and uh, Atiku. But I support what Obi said. Because like, like the last word he said, he said, I can't be, you know, uh, people can't be, you can't make uh, green energy out of the people who are running, and, you know, to hide from From, from insecurity, bombs. right. And, mm -hmm. Yes, and so to me, I believe that insecurity is first, must be the, uh, in the government out to enter in 2023, mm. insecurity must be the first, the first agenda that would, you know, they would tell us their plan and how to go about it to tackle the insecurity then before any other thing. Mm. Because without, without, you got this security right. Mm. I don't think that there's a need for any green energy or whatever. So I go with B because he, 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 he tell us what, what should be his first priority, which I agree with him 100%. All right. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello. Hello. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? I made the doom from Sura. As a doom, welcome. Go ahead. I think Peter B's mind is laced with sincerity. They did not say that it's a bad plan, mm. but how can a poor country mm. place green energy as a state of emergency when the country that has destroyed the world did not see it as an emergency? Mm. You see, Sandra, okay. why I would believe Peter B and this belief article is that article's comment is a common Nigerian person comment mm -hmm. where they will accept to do big things that they have deceit in the heart. 
Hatiku will tell you that I will restructure Nigeria, but PDP is begging for restructuring. The whole of Southern region is cut out from PDP, which is making the people to demand inclusion. And Hatiku is playing deceit. So his statement is beautiful, and uh, 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 and you cannot believe it because he did not accept the fact. Peter B is a sincere man. He will tell you see the truth, but we have emergency. Right. We have emergency. Okay. Emergency is our economy, the security, law and order. Okay, thank you very much for calling. 99.3, hello. Remember, everybody gets one minute. Oh, no. Okay, I can't take the call if the radio is loud. 99.3, hello. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for calling. What's your name, sir? Uh, okay, is my name. Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah, I believe Peter Bishu, I may mean, be correct on this. Because, look, there's always a trade-off. That is what they call opportunity cost in economics. So you cannot be driving, you know, uh, green energy, uh, you know, climate change. Where else the country is poor? Where do we earn the most of our resources? It's from this fossil fuel. So by the time you remove fossil fuel from the equation, how are you going to develop? How are you going to fuel your industry? No, it's a solid state, the state we are in now. We are more than 50 percent, as you have told us, of our source of revenue, the big source of revenue that we have, is being mismanaged and nobody can account for it. But if all those things come into the uh, equation, by which we've been able to safeguard that asset, have we been able to, you know, bring in as much as 90% of what we are supposed to earn from that fossil fuel? We can use it as a source of development. Hmm. You know, each country has its, you know, priority, has its, you know, area of advantage. Mm -hmm. This fossil fuel is an area of advantage and we cannot joke with it. We cannot play along with the Western world that has developed by way of technology and all others. Hmm. It's all to our disadvantage. And I think that is what Peter will be saying. All no right. matter how knowledgeable you are in that instance, you have to make sure that your priorities are got it right. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Everybody gets one minute. Remember, 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? It is Manuel for Naja. Emmanuel, welcome. Yes, Sandra, I don't have problem with uh, any other PDP or uh, Labour Party. Peter, we all of them are my people. Okay. But my concern, you know my concern. What's your concern? As far as APC goes, the, the, the election, I'm good to go. Okay. Because APC have caused a lot of problems, the first one in this country. Okay, but we're not talking about that. We're talking specifically about a policy conversation. And the APC has not, uh, well, let me not say the APC. Bola Chinubu, who is a front runner for the APC, uh, the presidential candidate of the APC, has not um, made his own stand on green energy and fossil fuels and clim climate change known. He doesn't, he hasn't told us his position on that yet, right? So we're focusing instead on the two candidates who have shared, um, you know, what they they believe what they think about green energy and where Nigeria should be in that conversation. And I'm asking you, which of the two frontrunner presidential candidates do you agree with more on this? So Peter Obi says uh, d uh, during his uh, diaspora tour that um, he doesn't you know, know much about green energy. He's not an expert about it, even though he's read quite a bit about it. But he also doesn't believe it's a priority for Nigeria uh, when people are trying to get, you know, save their lives first. Atiku, on the other hand, tweeted that climate change is a real problem and that it is a priority because it's, it's impacting farmers, it's impacting people's properties, it's why flooding is such a problem in Nigeria, the same way it's a, a problem all over the world. And, and so I'm asking you what you think about these two men's positions on this thing. They both agree it's a problem. Climate change is a problem. Obi says government will pay attention to green energy, but it's not a top priority. Atiku says climate change is an issue that should be top of mind because it has real world effects on our farmers, on our property. And then for those who say, oh, uh, insecurity is the real issue, insecurity is a problem, that's what um, any serious government should focus on, part of the reason why there's insecurity is climate change. I'll tell you why. So you have herders who are migrating more and more to the south. 
The reason they are migrating more and more to the south is because there's long droughts, there's uh, uh, no water for their cattle to drink, and because they haven't modernized their herd herding practices, they continue to migrate more and more to the south looking for greener pastures, looking for water for their cattle, etc., etc. And when you're doing that, you're encroaching upon land that doesn't belong to you, you're eating the crops of farmers who have toiled and slaved away on their farms, and when the farmers say to you, well, you cannot let your cattle just come into our farms and destroy stuff and wreck stuff. Um, they get angry and they kill some, they fight others, and then they continue to fight each other, uh, with each other trying to protect their resources that are scarce. That's a direct consequence of climate change. Also an unwillingness to modernize practices, but climate change is also inside there. So if you want to tackle a problem like that, you may want to make, uh, you know, you know, you want to, you may want to pay more attention to um climate change and green energy, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just giving you other angles so that you can have an informed opinion. That's what we do on hard facts, right? What do you think? 0700-993-993-993. Let's come back to the phone lines. Everybody gets one minute. Huh? 0700 993 Hello, good evening. Hello. How are you, sir? What's your name? Hello? Oh, I'm are you driving? Your network is really bad. Hello? Hello? Oh, that's unfortunate. 99.3. Hello? Hello. Good to have you on the show. All right. Um, my name is Sylvester. I'm calling from Ijebode. Welcome, Sylvester, from Ijebode. All right. Um, as, as regards the view of the two frontrunner candidates, uh, it, it depends on the angle from which we're looking at it. They are both right in their own way. Right. Uh, because in, in, in actual fact, when you talk about um, climate change and renewable, it is contributory. So mm. to what extent uh, would Nigeria contribution right, mm. um, affect the global effect of climate change? Those are the, some of the things one needs to consider. Basically. That's right. That's right. Article, article is right. Um, um, but his position, because uh, climate change actually affects virtually everybody globally. Mm. But the, the, the question is, which is priority? Right. To what extent will Nigeria invest in climate change that will actually make it, um, that will actually give it um, um, a global effect, even immediate global effect within Nigeria? Those are some of the indices one will consider as to determine what is priority or what is not priority. But uh, uh, for me, I, I think a uh, bit of this view as... Uh, uh, it, 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 they can all go concurrently mm. in terms of tackling security, mm. and of course, in the in the in the in the uh, course of tackling security and some some pressing issues as far as the nation is concerned, mm. one gives um, climate change and renewable energy um, some kind of uh, consideration within the line uh, within the course of tackling all of them. One cannot just get this thing because it's really very uh, is a concern, but how much of Nigeria's con contribution mm. would actually um, um, bring about um, uh, direct or indirect uh, um, consequences Consequences what globally, right, basically. Right, We're right. talking about global. Right. And Nigeria is just uh, a little part of the global um, issues. As, as, as We're not as even industrialized. Country. We're not you even know. an industrialized nation. So you have to exactly, look at China exactly. first, so what is look at India, look at... Africa itself yeah. into, to climate change, basically, yeah. Yeah. Uh, compared to, to all these developed um, countries in Europe and um, and um, not America. Yeah. Okay. Basically. Thank you very much for calling. Give you a bit more time than usual, but okay. <laughs> We've got uh, a message here from Peter Yorinde. Peter says, Madam Sandra, I disbelieve Atiku, whose party for 16 years fled Ni Nigeria's gas resources. There was an I beg to differ topic which talked about green energy rations versus development of third world. I believe the mindset and support in Peter Obi. Uh, how can Nigeria industrialize and create jobs while we ban structures and policies that will encourage what will create jobs and opportunities. Atiku should let us know alternatives if he wants to focus and make green energy priority. Will he subside solar panel will he subsidize solar panels? Will he turn Sambiza Forest into a wind energy farm? Will he cut off his alleged investments in Nigeria's number one generator importers? I beg to differ, oh, Mr. Articulate. All right, Peter Yorinde, 
Thank you very much uh, for your message. We'll take a final message and then bring you information that is very important to you. Uh, this message here says, uh, Sandra Pichobi looked dazed about the question because he didn't have good knowledge about green energy. He was asked that question about three times and from his response, he used the issue of insecurity as a cover-up. Currently, I'm doing research on climate change and I can boldly say that Pichobi failed and Atiku was right. Tunji from Akoka with with that message there before i take more of your messages and bring you more conversation uh on the road to 2023 let's bring you this piece of information yes so i have something very interesting from nokia so you know there are devices and then there are nokia devices <laughs> and like humans there's something that will always strike you the most about the person Nokia P20 tablet brings the practically simple to expect from a Nokia phone to the big screen and helps you find better work-life balance. The Pika 3301 phone lets you track both work and social stations and maybe mile times in stunning detail. An enhanced speaker with wow microphone helps you hear and see voice better. Take part in up to seven hours of conference calls, enjoy a reflusion of your favorite shows on the go, or watch and improve prayer videos with its 8,200 mAh long-lasting battery. Guys, that is not all. Plus, two years of OS upgrades and three years of monthly security updates in a well-built design means you've been enjoying this for all years to come. So long story short, guys, the Nokia P20 tablet is definitely a must. Don't sleep on it, boo. Get the Nokia experience on the P20 tablet today. All right. Thank you very much. We've got this message here on WhatsApp. It says, uh, Madam Sandra, good evening. Uh, is green energy the immediate problem of this country? For me, no. Um, he should take care of the country's immediate need first, such as economy, security, education, electricity, and corruption. Dennis from Oludia Papa with that message there. I'm going to just sign off with uh, messages you know, before we have to take another break then when we come back from this break i want to talk to you about a poll that was conducted by anap foundation anap foundation is an ngo set up by atedo peterside to promote good governance and they've introduced their own election opinion poll um, they used it in guba elections in places like Oshun state for now for instance but uh, now we have their first poll for the presidential elections i'm going to tell you what the poll says when we come back from a commercial break but for now here's a message on whatsapp that says um the this is victor in lecky victor and lecky says today uh, fuel is 170 to 150 depending on location usd is 710 to a naira sandra there's banditry currently now that folks can't move from one location to another as we stand today if you go to the market no one is talking about green energy rather everyone is crying about the cost of things in the market so excuse all those critics saying what they're saying with hope to condemn his thoughts sandra i stand with peter obi that thought about farmers migrating isn't an excuse at all because if there seems to be a problem due to climate change then you can apply gmos all right victor very strong uh, strong opinion there we'll take a break when we come back you tell me who you agree with atiku or obi we can't talk about tinubu yet because he hasn't shared his thoughts on climate change or green energy for that matter i'm sandra ezekwesli you're listening to hard facts don't go away. Win big. Experience the wonder of the FIFA World Cup in Qatar with Coca-Cola. Buy any Coca-Cola product with a white cap. Check the code under the cap and dial star 8014 star 1 star code hash to participate for free. You could win an all-expense pay trip to the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. There's also 250...
over 20 years. Then you should see the latest economic trends. After the break, we will take the economic and business sector development in major states back to back. And major facilities here also. Come on global level and here to help to reach major states. It is better to start by getting your degree in the start. Now, let's stick to that and to go to like this to draw highlights to the start and the summit to major development. And you get next year with you to make your life really fast. Selling down, major down, standard down, second city down. Fourth down, UBN, SC Bandit, US Bank, Computer Cabin, FMGC, FSGA, Outside Bank, Bandit IBTC, Action Bank, Royal Bank, GIG Group, CCBTC, Provident Bank, and DWC. And we get the next year with you to be a part of it. And also, Major Economic Summit Group. It's the road to 2023 where we talk about the biggest stories already shaping next year's election. And today's big hard fact is that it's exactly 162 days until the general elections on February 25th, 2023. Lagos, we are almost uh, in the official campaign season. Candidates are talking more and more about their plans. And like I said before the break, on the road to 2023, we'll also be talking more and more about their policy points, which is why before the break, I was asking you which presidential candidate is right about green energy. I shared Atiku's viewpoint. I shared Pitobi's viewpoint. Pitobi has uh, 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 Bolatinubu has not shared his viewpoint yet, uh, but as soon as he does, I'll share that with you as well. But let's talk now about the poll from the ANAP Foundation. Like I mentioned before the break, the ANAP Foundation is an NGO set up by Atedo Peterside to promote good governance. They have introduced their own election opinion poll. Uh, like I said before the break, they used it in the Guber elections in places like Oshun State. But now we have their first poll for the presidential elections. The first question on the poll was, quote, suppose the presidential election is being conducted today. Who are you likely to vote for? That was their first 
question on the poll. Suppose the presidential election is being conducted today. Who are you likely to vote for? And here are the results. Peter Obi was ahead with 21% of responses. Atiku Abubakar and Bola Tinubu were joint second with 13% each. Rabi Ukwankwaso had 3%. All other candidates shared 1%. 2% of respondents said none. 32% were undecided. 15% refused to answer. If you notice, for those of you who are math people, bring out your calculator. Let's do it again. From this poll, from this NGO called ANAP Foundation, Peter Obi was ahead with 21% of responses. Atiku Abubakar and Bola Tinubu were joint second. They were tied for second place with 13% each. Rabi Ukwankwaso had 3%. All other candidates shared 1%. 2% of respondents said none of the three. 32% were undecided. 15% refused to answer. If you notice, Obi is ahead by 8 points. But undecideds and those who refuse to answer make up 47%, which is way more than 8 points. So even though Obi is ahead, ANAP is calling the poll inconclusive. The poll also broke um, the responses down by zone. So Atiku is ahead in the northwest and northeast. Obi and Tinubu are tied at the front in the north central. Obi is ahead in the southeast and south south, while Tinubu is ahead in the southwest. I have a lot of questions, by the way. Lots of questions about the methodology, for instance, of this poll. Um, ANAP's website isn't answering um, the question about their methodology. I'm hoping that I will have ANAP here on the show on Hard Facts so that they can talk to us about the methodology of this poll. Um, so I want to know the sample size, you know. I want to know the margin of error. I want to know if they have state-by-state -state data, which is more predictive than zone-by-zone. -zone. I have so many questions. And when I get them on the show with me um hopefully they'll have those answers for me but for now this is what we know so lagos what do you think about these poll results zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three zero seven zero zero nine nine three nine nine three nine nine three that's the only number working apologies about that to our women listeners we're working hard with mtn to get the other line back up you can also share your thoughts via whatsapp whatsapp is 080 959 75805 of course there's twitter at nigeria info fm facebook nigeria info 99.3 Hello, thanks for calling Hello. us. Sorry about that. Give us a call back if you can. Good evening. Good evening, Sandra. How are you, sir? Well, this is Pastor Ladipo. I'm calling from Murilegum. Hello, Sandra. I'm here. I'm listening. Go ahead. All right. My take this evening is this. Hmm. This poll may look as if it's not real, but it's a shadow of something to come. Okay. This forthcoming election we pull surprise. But listen, the umpire who happens to be the INEC, they are going to be a major factor in this forthcoming election. Major factor. Okay. And already we can see that there, there is an attempt to twist things from, from far. So this particular poll now mm. shows a lot that there will be a shaking. That is just what I believe. All right. Thank you very much, Pastor Ladikbo, for calling 99.3. Hello. 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 Good evening, uh, sir. Evening. Yes. Uh, Cletus from Kodu. Welcome, Cletus. Uh, yeah, the first thing that that I wonder, that I want to, that I want to ask mm. is that why is it that People will be in APC or in PDP or in Labour, and they will use a cover up. They will use maybe NGO mm. or something like a, a foundation mm. to use a cover up mm. and 
come and be deceiving us. And we had grown up as more than 70 years. I follow pol politics. I don't belong to any party, but I just follow them mm. in and each to, 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 to be informed in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, first and foremost, at uh, do Peter Said, happened to, because I watched him on Canada's television mm. some time ago, mm. he was defending uh, 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 this candidate. Labour Party candidate. Mm. He was defending, he was majorly defending him mm. as, as a person that he likes, mm. that he likes to vote for. I, I, but when I had, when I now hear that mm. he's bringing a foundation resort, mm. I now think baffle me that. How can you be supporting or have an affiliation mm -hmm. to one candidate and be bringing something on the same candidate he's saying he's leading. But, but, he, but, he, he, but that he has a found. I don't know if you've ever owned a company, but the fact that you have a foundation doesn't mean that you're the one that is going out into the field to go and conduct polls. You know how polls uh, work, right? Okay, you are, you are right, but, but what, what belittle the whole thing, mm. what be cloudy the whole thing is that you, you, the owner of that foundation, mm. you are already, it's just like what we say Buhari is doing too. Mm. We are doing Buhari. You, are, you have belonged you think, to you think we, party. People should not trust the results of the poll because he yes, is... Okay, yes. okay. In fact, Igor Chichiri, mm. Igor Chichiri mm -hmm. is contesting, is contesting as a people candidate, as a PP candidate mm. in the most state to, to, to House of Rep. Mm. And he's, he's going through CPP, mm. CUPP, to bring issue out, mm. it's better we may we mention who they are. Mm. Then if we if we, we then left for us, mm. we now believe that this candidate is so 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 is a candidate is, is, is in this party, but this is what he believe he what he brought out. All yes. right, thank you very much, Cletus. I uh, remember I'm giving everybody one minute, but you you've spoken for almost two minutes there. Thank you for calling ninety nine point three. Hello, hey Sandra. Good to have you on the show, <laughs> Kevin. Welcome. Yes, um, one of the polls that. Uh, was conducted so mm. that really got me dissatisfied and confused mm. that would democracy ever get it right mm. because actually democracy is not perfect yes uh, yes it's not yes. perfect mm -hmm. uh, so in the 2016 pool you are creating a drop <laughs> 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 that was the shock and there were several polls conducted yes even in advanced democracies like that kind of place mm -hmm. you know the polls you can use it to really judge how the election will be. It's going to go, yeah. Yes, you can really judge it. Yeah. You know, developing nations like ours, you know, I don't believe any polls that are being done. Mm. It's not this one that I like is begging people to come and correct their PVC. <laughs> <laughs> if it's still there, they don't go collect our well, money. well, uh, well. Uh, the, the thing I do like about this poll, though, is that they called it inconclusive because you have forty-seven percent of the respondents who we don't know how they're going to go one way or the other. Undecided. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, uh, that's a huge chunk, and that forty-seven percent could go any way. Yes, it will go any way, mm -hmm. and um, it's still based on the realm of permutations. Mm -hmm. You know, even though if you look at the United States, where we copy our democracy from, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, Hillary Clinton still won the popular vote. Yes, a lot of people don't know she still won it. It's just that that electoral college of a thing that I hate, that I detest, which I call, which I, which I tell my friends when we are taking that green bottle. You know, I call <laughs> it that it is a it is a legalized rigging for mm -hmm. the American democracy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that electoral college is there. I don't know what it's there for. <laughs> so, but having said that, all and all, yeah. he's still a fool. Mm. And I'm being apprehensive with all this noise everywhere. Mm. Not that I'm just being with somebody. I'm, I'm a bit apprehensive. I hope the whole noise of social media on the streets and all these places mm -hmm. will translate to the better that election result of come next February. All right, Kevin, thank you very much for calling. You know, Atedo Peter Sides Foundation also called uh, Bola Tinubu the front runner in the election. I don't know how many of you were following it at the time. Um, Peter Said has also spoken pos uh, positively about all three frontrunners. In fact, uh, I remember that Ubi supporters got angry with Atero Peter Said on Twitter uh, for calling Tinubu a frontrunner. So, um, you know, thinking about the, the phone call I had with uh, Kletos before Kevin, is this maybe a situation where people focus only on what a person says against their own candidate or in favor of their opponent. I don't know. But back to the matter. Oh, by the way, there's actually more data from the ANAP poll. So ANAP also asked the respondents why they were planning to vote next year. 
And here are the top five responses. Number one was the need to tackle insecurity. 45% of respondents said that. Number two was the economy. 20% of the respondents said economy. Number three was education. 9% of respondents said that. Number four was unemployment. 7% of respondents said that. And number five was poverty alleviation. 4% of respondents said that. I want to know if this is your top five as well. So while you're talking to me about what you think about the poll, talk to me as well about if these are your top five uh, reasons for voting next year. Why were they planning to vote? And the respondents said number one on their list was insecurity, number two, the economy, number three, education, number four, unemployment, number five, poverty alleviation. Would you place them in this same order or are there things that will be your number one that are currently not number one from this poll from an app? 99.3. Hello. Hello, Sandra. Thank you for calling. What's your name, sir? My name is Prince Wyatt. Calling you from Amuwa, Delta. Prince Wyatt, you know better than to leave your radio on now. I'm trying to do it, my dear. You see, this uh, is told. It's just too early. A letter had not started. No, no campaign had not started. Hmm. And uh, some of what this uh, poll is saying, some of them will be a supporter of a political party. Hmm. The political party may sponsor them. Now, we never had them. What are you going to do for Nigeria? What are you going to do for this? Are you going to do that security? We never hear anything, anything from them. Hmm. Kapia have not started. So, by bringing up poor by this time around, it's just too premature. Okay. So, I guess that fellow, they should go back home and do their homework very well before coming out. So, All right, thank you very much. Ogunkoya on Facebook says, um, "Opinion poll reader rigors are not different from election rigors. Atelo Peter side should not be conducting opinion polls. He lacks the credibility to conduct any polls. He is one of Mr. Peter Obi's campaign managers. This is like Lagos NURTW MCO Luomo conducting opinion poll that uh, states that uh, Ashua Juba, uh, Tinubu." would win the 2023 presidential election. You already know the results. Stop fooling Nigerians. Stop rigging opinion polls. Ogunkoya with that message there. We've got Chidebera Duribe who says, uh, okay, Chidebera is responding to somebody else. Muritala Adola says, Sandra, what a shame from a presidential candidate, P2B, uh, doesn't know anything about climate change. Um, that's not how to spell doesn't. Doesn't is D O E S. N apostrophe T, you said D O Z E N. And that's also not, not how to spell no. No is K N O W, you spelled N O. All right, so Sandra, what a shame from a presidential candidate, Peter Obi, doesn't know anything about climate change. Let's go to WhatsApp. On WhatsApp, I've got a, a message here from Samuel in New York. Samuel says, I saw the poll online. I was disappointed. Though my preferred candidate won the poll, it was poorly executed. What's the methodology, the sample size, the margin of error? How do you report percentages without numbers? 10% of 100 is not the same as 10% of 1,000. Poll organizers should organize better polls and surveys. Hmm. Mario from Ebutemeta says, Sandra, I want to be sarcastic. Obi is a social media president. This must be a wake-up call for LP. More work needs to be done. Okay, uh, we've got uh, a message here. Sandra, this is not the first time a nap is conducting this poll. Uh, they've done it in 2011, 2015, 2019, and their results have been consistent. This poll, they said they're going to do it four times. Subsequent ones will have more details and it will trim down to four major candidates. While those who are saying, oh, it's too, it's premature, it's too early, in other democracies, the polls start very early. They start before actual campaign begins. Things. Um, you know, as soon as the major candidates um, come forward, as soon as flag bearers are known, you, you start to get like polls like this um, show up quite a bit. Uh, but I should also uh, mention that you should disregard the comments from one of the uh, messages I read that says Peter Side is an OB campaign worker. That's a lie. Peter Side is not an OB campaign worker. We've got messages on WhatsApp. Let me take a few more of them. 
Sandra, I'm not satisfied with the poll. I will conduct mine, Sir Ken, with that message on WhatsApp. We're going to continue this conversation for 15 more minutes after the news at 6. six uh, the news at 6 will end at 6.15. So from 6.15 to 6.30, you and I will keep talking about this. So I know you want to call. I, I know you want to send your messages, but I want to just focus on messages for now. Then as soon as the news is over from 6.15, we'll just come back and focus on this um, uh, final part of today's Road to 2023. If you want to talk about the first part of the story where we talked about the candidates' positions on um, climate change and green energy, feel free to talk about it as well with me on the other side of 6 o'clock. From 6.15, we'll have that conversation. We've got this message uh, from Ola who says, I find it difficult to believe. Uh, Ola, you're being very, very silly. You're being very silly. You need to grow up. We've got uh, this message from Ugochuku in Ikorodu who says, oh, oh, by the way, I'm calling Ola silly because he made a, a silly accusation, a stupid accusation against me. And he needs to grow up. Ugochuku from Ikorodu says, basically, reckless choices of first world countries would negate all our efforts towards climate change. It's best that we put our best interests on the front burner. It's interesting that you say that because I'm thinking about China, right? And... If for those of you who follow like climate conversations, energy conversations, you know that China notoriously ignored climate issues until they industrialized and became the second largest economy. Now they're starting to lead the charge on renewables. So it's quite an interesting conversation to have. And I'm glad that um, uh, you've got uh, Atiku and P2B having the conversation at least, at least having opinions about the conversation. I'm very curious to hear what Tinubu has to say about green energy and um, climate change. I hope that he does speak on it very soon so that we can look at the position of these three frontrunners, as well as Rabiu Kwonko, so he's also kind of, sort of, a front runner as well. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll bring you the news at 6 o'clock. After the news at 6, let's keep talking about these subjects that I've brought to you today on the road to 2023. I am Sandra Ezekwasili, S. Ezekwasili on social media. Sandra Ezekwasili everywhere. Don't go away. More talk, news and sports after this. Rolling in two, lights, camera. And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people what should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit you fire those those that need to be fired are fired it's looking like a brand new chelsea attacking with so much fluidity and what can you say about that martin i know you follow chelsea quite closely i live close to the chelsea training ground that's what you mean by that i'm not <laughs> And I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Atiku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people what should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit you fire those those that need to be fired are fired it's looking like a brand new chelsea attacking with so much fluidity and what can you say about that martin i know you follow chelsea quite closely i live close to the chelsea training ground that's what you mean by that i'm not <laughs> And 
Jonathan, I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Isaku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given M- time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people? What should the next president do to root out stakeholders who are complicit? You fire them. Those that need to be fired are fired. It's looking like a brand new Chelsea attacking with so much fluidity. And what can you say about that, Martin? I know you follow Chelsea quite closely. I live close to the Chelsea training ground. That's what you mean by that. I'm not <laughs> I want to assume that you would run because I want to give the listeners context for the conversation. In 2019, you were running late to um, Isaku Abubakar. What did you learn then that you will not repeat this time? Yes, when is the president coming out to address us? There's a few things. One, I have a burden and a passion for young people. The fact that you have elected a man does not mean then you begin to order him around. The president will do whatever is good for the country at any given time. Mr. Adeshino, isn't the president responsible to the people? 